Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. Welcome to the another video on Kotlin collection operations. In the previous video, you have gone through various functions which were used for retrieving single elements from a collection. In this video, we will move on to the next section which is ordering. And as a part of ordering, there are a couple of functions like sorted, sorted by, sorted with, reversed, shuffled. So in this video, we will look at how to use these functions. So let's get into a demo. So this is the old familiar list, a list of person. And we have also defined this particular person class. So we will get started with sorting very simple things initially. So let me create a list of strings and if i want to sort it list of strings dot sorted all i have to do is invoke a function called as sorted and this is going to return me a collection which is sorted in a ascending order and if you want to get a collection in a descending order then there is a function called as sorted descending which is going to return me a descending list but in this case we are basically talking about simple strings that are being ordered in an ascending order or a descending order in case of numbers it would be just ascending and descending numbers in case of floors it would be just ascending and descending floors because in that case we clearly know how to sort them but what happens if we are working with custom objects say for example person person is a custom object and we need to know how to say that a whether a particular person object should come first in a list and the next person object should come later after the first one. So we need to define a way to tell the system that which one is bigger and which one is smaller. And if you are coming from Java background, you would be already knowing uh, for that we use something called as comparable interface. You can pretty much do the same thing here as well. Let me show you. This is the person class. And if you see here, this person class is implementing comparable interface. And when it implements the comparable interface, you have to override compare to function. And in this case, right now, I am doing a comparison by age. If I just keep this thing side by side so that it is easy to understand, and then people dot sort for each print it and if i run this you will see that these are sorted in the ascending order by age because that is how we have defined the compared to functionality by age but if i had defined it by first name and if i run this thing again you will observe that now they are arranged in the increasing order of the first name i can make it last name and then by default this list will be sorted by the last name so it basically depends on how you have implemented your compare to functionality and based on that that is the default sorting logic the compiler will use to sort your list of custom objects however the problem with this mechanism is once you define this that is what you are stuck with but more often than not what you want to do is you want to sort a list of objects in different ways at the same time sometimes you want to sort them by first name sometimes you want to sort them by last name sometimes you want to sort them by age this doesn't give you enough freedom to do that in a flexible manner and that is where the comparator interface comes into picture with this what you can do is you can write multiple interfaces and since in kotlin this is done through the implementation of companion objects we have basically implemented multiple companion objects that is first name comparator last name comparator and age comparator and if you look at the internal logic what it does is it compares first names last names and 
edge each of the comparator does the implementation of the compare function in a slightly different manner it is the same comparator interface that you would have come across in java with this mechanism what i can do is instead of writing sorted i can write sorted set and then pass a comparator which comparator first comparator instance and if i run this you will see that now these are arranged by the first name and if i just change the comparator it sorts it by last name and that is the whole advantage of defining multiple companion objects which implement the comparator interface but this is still very old way of doing it because you are basically trying to map what you used to do in java to kotlin let's try to do the same thing in a new way instead of writing complicated comparators what i can do is people dot sort by and here i can say it dot h and then i am just going to print the object and if i run this you will see that we are getting the collection sorted by age and if i don't want age if i want to do it dot first name you can do that as well so it becomes much more easier than what you used to do in java so it is less ceremonial lot of lines get reduced when you do by this mechanism there is even another way that is people dot sorted with and here you can pass a comparator it is the same comparator that we implemented a couple of minutes back only the thing is here we are doing it in a slightly different manner so sorted with compare by and here you can say what is it so it dot age and then i am going to basically write the same for each print line and if i run this it is going to sort it by age so here is basically you are writing your own comparator but in a very short syntax there is another function which is called as reversed what it does is it basically changes the order in which you have defined your list and reverses it it is not sorting it it is just reversing it so what do i mean by that is if i write people dot reversed and if i run this initially if you see here the first element was anil but here the anil is the last element and second element was amit and here last but one is the amit so this is not really ordered it is just reversing the collection from its initial position there is even another function which is called as as reversed it is pretty similar to reverse only the thing is it returns a reverse view of the same collection so let me run this as you can see it is pretty similar to the previous reverse that we had seen then if you don't really want to sort it you just basically want to shuffle it then there is shuffled and if i run this now you will see that these are just shuffled in a random order and every time i run it it basically shuffles them in a random order so that you don't have to really write a complicated logic on how to shuffle them so that's it with ordering of collections that with this we are basically done with kotlin collection operations it may look like the aggregate operations are not covered but they are covered as a part of grouping video which was done couple of videos back so i won't be doing a separate aggregate operations related video so basically what i am saying is with this we are done with the kotlin collection operations in the next video we will move on to the new topic in kotlin that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye